Hello everyone, welcome back to Educate Lee Geography. Today we're going to be talking about the different poles on Earth, namely the geographic poles, the magnetic poles, and the geomagnetic poles. So let's get started. Today's objective, we're just going to define these terms, like these different poles, and we're just going to contrast them and see how they're different. So let's start with the geographic poles. So simply put, you can say these are like the north and south poles that most people talk about when they talk about the poles, but that's an ambiguous way of defining things. So the geographic poles, scientifically speaking, it's where Earth's axis of rotation intersects the surface. As you're probably aware, um, Earth doesn't like rotate on like a horizontal scale with like a completely vertical axis. Its axis is tilted at an angle of about 23 degrees. So it kind of rotates around, it rotates around that axis and um, it's not horizontal. It rotates like, like that if you're watching my pointer right now. Um, so you can imagine that there's like a rod, like an imaginary rod that kind of like impales Earth. It intersects um, one end of the Earth and it comes out on like the direct opposite side of the Earth. Those two intersection points are the geographic poles. That's the best way of thinking about it, in my opinion. So to understand the magnetic poles, you have to first understand the magnetic field. Earth's magnetic field, it's like a magnetic layer that deflects harmful solar wind particles and other things from the sun, from space. Um, it's formed by convection currents inside the Earth's core, um, like electricity that's like cycling around. So yeah. Um, the magnetic poles, it's where the magnetic field, like this magnetic field, it's like where it's like vertical or like perpendicular to the Earth's surface. So if we go back to that illustration, like the blue is what's depicting the magnetic field. Um, so basically where it's like digging into Earth on both, in both hemispheres, that's, uh, where the magnetic poles are because this isn't like an e like the magnetic field isn't perfectly even it's definitely not symmetrical um they don't actually have to be on the direct opposite sides of earth like you're gonna see with like the geomagnetic poles we talked about geomagnetic poles and also the geographic poles they have to be on opposite like direct opposite sides of the planet but magnetic poles they don't and they aren't right now the thing you have to know about the magnetic poles is the north magnetic pole um the red tip of a compass if you went to the um, North Magnetic Pole, and if you allowed a compass to point straight down, it would point straight down, like the red tip of it. That's just a fancy way of saying that compasses, generally speaking, point to the North Magnetic Pole, not the North Geographic Pole. So the Magnetic Poles, they don't have to be at the Geographic Poles, namely because they're completely different things. The Geographic Poles are based on where the Earth's, or like how Earth's axis is like tilted and like where that intersects, and like the Magnetic Poles, these are just where the magnetic field digs into the planet. Um, also, the magnetic poles, they move at a rate of several kilometers per year. The geographic poles, they do move with, like, how the Earth's, Earth's axis is tilting, but, um, because, you know, the Earth's axis, axis and it's, like, axial tilt, it actually does change over time very slightly, but the geographic poles, they don't move any more than a few centimeters any year or any decade, um, but the magnetic poles, they move a lot faster. The difference between the North Magnetic Pole and the North Geographic Pole, it leads to an error that we call declination. And this is the very important part about this, because a compass, again, it points towards the North Magnetic Pole. So that means if you want to go, if you want to like travel in a direction, like North, East, West, or South, um, you, you want to travel relative to the North Geographic Pole, because that's, you know, how we're disoriented. Um, but compasses actually say direction, like they tell us direction relative to the North Magnetic Pole. So that's the big caveat, I guess, with compasses. And you have to adjust for that declination because, you know, these different poles, they're like vastly different places and some, at some times, um, you know, like the magnetic pole does move, but sometimes they're like completely different locations and that kind of throws off compasses. So they become less reliable. Um, so you have to adjust your compasses for a declination. So this is a declination map um published in the united states um it says basically how you have to adjust your compasses at different times this is specifically for 2010 it's going to be different now because you know the magnetic poles have the north magnetic pole has moved since um but in 2010 if you're in washington state you would have to adjust your compass by about 15 degrees to account for that declination because you know you want to travel relative to where the geographic north pole is so if you want to go north you would want to go towards the geographic north pole but you would actually according to your compass you would actually just be traveling towards where the magnetic north pole is that's a difference that you have to keep in mind when you're using the compass so what's a geomagnetic what are the geomagnetic poles i should say um this one's a bit more abstract but if you place the bar magnet which is just like a flat straight perfectly straight magnet 
with two magnetic ends to it, if you place an imaginary large magnet inside the Earth, the geomagnetic poles would be where the two ends point. So you might be wondering, like, why aren't why isn't that just where the magnetic poles? Why won't this magnet just point where the magnetic poles are? The reason is because I mentioned earlier the magnetic poles they aren't perfect. It isn't a perfect. The magnetic field isn't a perfect dipole. It isn't a perfectly even magnet. It doesn't. It's just it's not perfect. And it's I, I talked about this earlier how the magnetic poles they don't have to be at opposite ends of the planet. But geomagnetic poles, they actually do because, again, this bar magnet is actually, it's perfectly straight. So it can't point to, it can't like bend inside the earth. If you put a bar magnet inside the planet, it would have to be perfectly straight. And that means the geomagnetic poles, they have to be directly opposite one another. So they can't mathematically match the magnetic poles, which aren't, which aren't necessarily opposite one another. It's kind of like an even, it kind of like accounts for like, kind of like compensates for that in a sense compensates for that unevenness in this because you know it has to change as a result of this not being perfectly even so yeah the one thing to note about the geomagnetic, the geomagnetic poles is that they appear to be at the center of where the northern lights are the aurora borealis and where the southern lights as for the case of the southern ge geomagnetic pole where the southern lights are the aurora australis where that occurs, it's like at the center. So what that means is usually when you have like um the northern or southern lights, there's like a ring around which it's perfectly like visible. And at that very center of that ring, that's where about where the geomagnetic poles are for whatever reason. So this is an illustration of the geomagnetic poles. Um, I think it helps to like look, if you didn't understand the reference to like a bar magnet, um, you can imagine this is like a cross section of the planet. Um, you can also say that, like, imagine you place like a compass or like also like a bar magnet, but in this case, a compass inside Earth. Obviously, there's no compass inside Earth, but it would have to point like wherever that compass would end up pointing. That would be where the geomagnetic North Pole is, and like, obviously, the opposite side would be where the geomagnetic South Pole is. You might be wondering why doesn't why why isn't it the same as the magnetic poles? Because um. Again, the North Geomagnetic Pole and the South Geomagnetic Pole, they have to be directly opposite one another, while um, the Magnetic Poles, they don't have to be opposite one another. So this kind of compensates for that, because you have to kind of like change where it's pointing to reach that evenness. So yeah, it like involves having really strong knowledge about like magnetism, which we're not going to get into, but that's basically the simple way of putting things. Um, again, the geomagnetic poles, just like the magnetic poles, and to a very small extent, the geographic poles, they move. Um, this is the movement of the, um, in red, you can see the movement of the north magnetic pole. It's moved from northern Canada all the way to near the geographic north pole over the last 120 years. In blue, you see the movement of the geomagnetic north pole. Um, it's moved a lot less compared to, you know, the magnetic pole, but it's moved fairly considerably from Greenland to Northern Canada over the last 120 years. So that's interesting to note. Yeah, that's just based on like how the magnetic field has changed over time. But yeah, so that does it for this video. Um, Hopefully you found that helpful in distinguishing between these different poles. It can get kind of confusing sometimes, I know. But hopefully we helped. Um, If you have any more curiosities about geography, um, feel free to browse through our website. We also have plenty of other subjects here, but that does it for today. So thanks for watching.